Hi there and welcome to today's Quantic Carpenter Nature of Flowers Photoshop tutorial. Today I'm going to show you how to do all these torn paper effects over a portrait. You can see what we have here. We have like an old sepia style photograph with really bright, vibrant eyes shining through a ripped piece of paper. To do this, we're going to use three layers. We're going to have a torn piece of paper photograph, a background layer with a color photograph and a foreground photograph in black and white. Okay, I'm going to talk you through step by step in real time to show you how to do this. So the first thing we're going to need to do is have a photograph of a face. From this, we might want to make some adjustments to the brightness and contrast. So we will go to brightness and contrast, give it slightly more contrast, maybe slightly darker or slightly lighter. To make the real brightness shine that out, we might adjust the saturation slightly as well to make it really quite bright, like so, and click OK. Once we are happy, with the adjustments we have made to the face, we will leave that layer alone and we will add in the torn paper. So we're going to go further and place embedded. I've taken the photograph of the torn piece of paper already, so I will find that and I will add it to the picture and click place. On this layer, once it loads, you will see that I have got a piece of paper and I have ripped a section of it out so that it looks like this. Okay, what we need to do next from our root piece of paper is remove this section from the photograph so we don't have it in our final picture. There's a couple of different ways to do that but I'm going to show you the quick select way. So we're going to use the quick select tool which is over near the object select tool. We're going to click on the plus and we're going to make sure it's relatively big and then we're going to click like so. You can see if it doesn't quite fit the area, we're going to use the minus and just take out the little bits that don't quite fit where we want it to, like so. Once we have done this and we've got a flashing line in the area, we are going to go to select and then inverse. And you'll see we have a flashing line around the whole area, like so. Once we've done this, we're going to add a layer mask to it by clicking the layer mask button. And you can see now we have got the image appearing through the hole. To make it look more effective, we're going to add a little bit of blending options. And we're going to add a drop shadow in. So we're going to go over to here to our drop shadows. We're going to make sure that we've got this on normal like so and we're going to make sure we're on the drop shadow that's right we're going to make sure we're on linear light here we've got a decent amount of spread like so and a fair amount of distance click ok and we've added our drop shadow and you can see that it makes the picture look like it is behind the piece of paper okay so far so easy i hear you say the next bit is very straightforward as well. We're going to duplicate the background layer. So we're going to right click, duplicate layer, click OK. We are then going to turn this layer black and white. So we're going to go to image adjustments, black and white. Click OK and you can now see we've got black and white face and a color face and a torn paper. We need to move the layer order of the black and white face so that it is above the torn paper layer, like so. Once we have done that, it is a question of then filtering out the areas we don't want for our picture. You can see on the finished picture here, we've masked out some of it so it looks like an old fashioned sepia style black and white newspaper sort of effect. So to do that, we will click the layer mask. Once we have selected the layer mask, We'll make sure we've got black and white selected down here. We've got the black showing at the top. We'll use the paintbrush, a relatively large size and a soft round one. We then look for where the torn edge is, go around it with our brush so that we can start to reveal the color of the layer underneath, like so. And we're looking for the bit where the paper is torn. We mask that over as well so it looks like the torn paper we then work our way around the edge to make it all look old-fashioned and fit in with our image like so go around this area as well 
trying to keep some of the image and blend some of it out like so so that it looks like sort of old fashioned style picture. Once we have done this and we're happy with it, we think actually, do you know what? I missed a bit there. So I'm going to blend that bit back in a bit more. And it might be that we need to bring a bit back. So in which case we switch over our tools to white, start adding some more areas back in. So we've got all the bits where we want them. And we can swap it back over and blend again. So we've got it exactly how we want our image to look. And there you go, that is a torn paper effect portrait made using three layers and layer masks over the original image. Okay, I hope you've enjoyed watching today's tutorial. If you have, obviously pop over to the channel, hit that subscribe button and tick the notification bell. And while you're there, you can check out some of the other tutorials that I've made recently. You go to playlists, then you can have a look at all the different playlists that I've got, in particular the Photoshop tutorials. And you will see that there is a large selection of different Photoshop tutorials to watch. From the text portraits to cat and eye, colour splashes, all sorts of things. There's a really fun one with some flowers in the face, a double exposure. Barbara Kruger style response. There's the layer masks, comparing Photoshop and Photopea, which is a really good one. We've got the colour splash, using a flower. Another popular technique at the moment is the Bokin portrait, where you have like coloured lights going through. We've looked at doing a Shepherd Fairy version of the famous graffiti artist. We've looked at doing landscapes, diamond landscapes. There's the really popular pixel stretch effect. The Banksy style graffiti effect. We've got some the drip effect, which is a really popular one at the moment. And the disintegrated effect etc. You can see here there are lots of different versions and one of my particular favourites is obviously the double exposure with the clouds. So you can see there's a lot of tutorials on there if you want to learn how to do Photoshop and you're just starting out obviously start with something simple maybe like the colour splash rose and if you're a little bit more advanced have a go at doing maybe the text portrait or the Erwin Blumenfold response. Okay, thank you very much for watching and have a really great day and goodbye.